All right, let's just revisit that point. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, Will really stepped up to the plate this time in a bigger way. He, he contributed a lot to the first record, to the writing, but this time uh, in a song uh, that ended up being called Long Walk Down, that was originally his idea. So he brought that uh, beautiful little intro part and he had the outro part as well. And he played it for me and I loved it right away. And just, I set up a mic and just ad-libbed the lyrics and that's why consequently I don't have any idea what they're about. <laughs> they're pretty abstract, I think they're, I think they're cool. Uh, and then the chorus sort of came out of that and uh, it's just a really interesting song, very kind of wind and weathering era Genesis if I had to put it in a box. Uh, and also Will came up with what, he, Will came up with the pieces of music that, that uh, inspired the long form song, the suite that we did called Second Sound, so it's the title track in a sense. It's side two, we think of it as side two. <laughs> uh, so he came up with uh, the intro part of that and the middle section which is similar, it's the variation on it. Of course the tempo went up about 20 beats per minute, but uh, other than that it was really just, uh, like Will had some very complete ideas. Oh, not a sempra. Like I'm talking working titles still. Uh, not a sempra ended up becoming in disbelief. Uh, we mixed the Italian for whatever reason. Um, Will had that. Actually, Will and Phil both had that song, and they had it in quite a quite a completed form when they sent it to me. And uh, it was a song that uh, I have to admit wasn't really you know doing much for me at first and then once we sort of whipped it up into a bit more shape and as it got more complete it ended up becoming one of my favorite songs because it's a nice it's a nice contained I think it's under four minutes or it's definitely the, I think it's the shortest song on the record and uh, it's it sort of has all of the elements if I had to give like the, you know a little synopsis of what our band is it kind of has all of the elements obviously not all the elements but you know it reminds me, well, I don't need to keep putting the music into a box. It reminds me of drug farming. Okay, good. Uh, other than that, uh, me and uh, Phil and myself split the lyrics probably 50-50, except for the four songs that I wrote myself. Right. I'm going to scat when he plays. <laughs> I don't know, any other specific, I think uh, That's pretty good coverage I think I covered it pretty good. Sound, that's for sure. Um, the DVD is interesting to me now, especially because we were told by the people in Europe and a couple of the other places that we have about, I'll just say we have about six or seven or eight suppliers, not suppliers, retailers that, that consistently buy wholesale product from us, right? That's been, a, there's Clemens Vath in Germany and specifically, he's not the only one and I'm going to forget the other ones. Uh, Ken Golden's another guy, but Clemens in Germany has really been a huge thing for us. You know, he he already sold 200 and he just ordered another 100. Like, just, you know, he wants to get us out to Germany and this, that, and the other. Now I'm losing track of what I was saying. So the DVD, anyway, the, yeah. the retailers all warned us, you know, not to, not to print up too many because DVD sales were down 40 to 60% in the last two years. You know, quite frankly, because everything's just on YouTube, right? Yeah. I mean, live albums and live things would never were as much of a sought after item for, you know, generally speaking. So, you know, we only did one run of them so far and at first, you know, of course I was thinking in the back of my mind, oh, it's going to be different for our DVD, man. But it wasn't, it wasn't selling at all. And interestingly enough, since we released Second Sound, there's been a huge spike in the sales of the DVD, which, you know, I don't really know why, but uh, I'm not complaining for once in my life. Oh, you're gaining um, fans. Yeah, it's great. And, uh, you know, we're working with a publicist, Ann Layton, out of uh, the Bronx, New York. So I'm sure that's helping to a certain degree, too. Um, yeah, the DVD, we shot it at the Mod Club. It's a, it's a, a nine-camera pro shot DVD. Uh, we had a jib. We had a nice backdrop. It looks great. It was uh, directed and shot by, uh, directed and edited by Neil Folkart, who's a friend of all of ours. Good guy. Yeah, great guy. Uh, I did the mix myself, the audio mix. We also have uh, a download version of the audio concert only, which is something else that we might even do a limited run of CDs of that, so we actually have some physical product, because that actually sells pretty well as, as well. So, 
Yeah, I mean, the DVD to me was the kind of thing that I just really wanted to have it. I just really wanted to see it. I love looking at it in my hands. It's really, you know, it's, it's got a tactile appeal, an aesthetic appeal. I, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad to look at it. There's some things on it that, you know, where it's weird looking at yourself on camera, as I'm sure this might be, right? Back up, man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, I'm glad Don't worry, we have it. I mean, looks at these; they just minimize it. Yeah, them. exactly. And, and another, another thing about it too. I mean, literally, that that show was the very first time that we played the entire album. Some of the songs we had never played before. So that's a, it's a it's a great you know it's a great document of the band, yeah. the first record, right? Consequently, we're thinking of doing another uh, DVD for this next record. You know, we've got second sound, so. In the spirit of, of the obvious, we need we need a second sight, don't you think? Yeah, right? great idea. Yeah, <laughs> digging deep there. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Um, okay, so uh, next question, I guess. Uh, do you want to talk about your life before uh, drug farbin or things that you do aside from drug farbin? Um, well, I'll talk about a couple of the things. There's, you know, I mean, I don't know if there's much to really say about my life. I mean, before, uh, you know, I'm a wildly fascinating young man, but uh, <laughs> there's not really too much. There's there's no uh, recording acts or anything that I could could mention that I've played with or anything like that. But uh, you know, I've been playing guitar since I was 11. You know, I took classical lessons. I, I obviously, you know, worked reasonably hard at it. Used to practice five, six, seven, eight hours a day all the time. Influenced by all the usual candidates of someone my age the first you know the band that made me really want to be to have a guitar is was kiss um, you know I mean I was 10 years old when kiss alive came out right which can bring me yeah exactly can bring me to the another, another thing that we did uh, um, I produced two songs with drug farm and for drug farm and for uh, an album called a world with heroes which is by a guy, which is a, a project by a guy named Mitch Lafon, and it's you know basically a tribute album of, uh, of to Kiss by a bunch of different people. I know Russ Dwarf from the Killer Dwarfs is on it. Uh, there's tons of people. I'm gonna forget everybody who's on it. Uh, but there's a lot of people that you know from the mid to late '80s that uh, you know that were very successful and are having a bit of a, a reprise and their a reprise in their success now too. Like like. Killer Dwarfs, right? Mm -hmm. um, who else is on it? Uh, you know, Phil Narrow's on it. <laughs> Do you know Phil Narrow? <laughs> I've heard of him. Um, anyway, we did Beth, of course. You know, okay. How could we not do Beth? Uh, which is very cool. Phil did an excellent job. Phil and Will did an excellent job. Actually, that track is just myself, uh, Phil singing, obviously, and Will playing piano. The other, Troy and Peter aren't on that particular one, but they are on the other one. But just to mention Beth... Uh, you know, it's a classic song. Of course, we brought the, the key up for Phil because Phil's not human like the rest of the other singers. So we don't bring the key down for Phil. We bring the key up. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then... Half step or... No, up a... Well, I, think, I think I brought it up a minor third or at least a tone. Wow. At least a tone. Um, and then I got a little carried away with the... Uh, I think I tracked 30 violins and violas on there so it's got a pretty interesting little middle section with the strings and some you know a little bit of prog backup vocals and vocals from Phil in there you know we twisted it in a little bit I twisted in a little bit of the prog but we kept it really true to the song and then we did another song that I had actually never heard called uh, Nowhere to Run very uh, you know early mid 80s kiss very high vocal from Paul Stanley so we didn't bring the key up on that one <laughs> but, you know, obviously Phil had no problem singing it. It's something that you probably wouldn't expect us as a band, Drug Farben, to do. Um, you know, I love, I grew up loving Kiss, and I love heavy, of all the guys in the band, I'm, I'm probably the guy that likes the heavy metal type stuff, right? Um, so it was great for me to do. I did my best, absolute best, humbly submitted Ace Frehley guitar solo ripoff. Uh, so I don't know if you know if people are interested. They can check that out. Nowhere to run in Bath. It's on our SoundCloud. Uh, yeah, SoundCloud. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay. So Kiss, and then the next big influence I have to mention for me is Rush. Uh, you know, I was 10 years old, and I got 2112 as a Christmas present. And 
know, I opened it up. I was intrigued by the way it looked, and then when I put it on, I was, you know, I was stunned. I was like, this is heavy space progressive rock, although I wouldn't have known what progressive meant at the time, but uh, I was just enamored and blown away and everything else, and uh, Ace Frehley made me pick up a guitar, and Alex Lifeson made me want to get as good as I could be on the guitar. And uh, for the next three years, for sure, well, maybe five years, I was just enamored with Rush, all things Rush. And of course that led to, yes, I mean, uh, all the stuff that Lifeson did, I'll just backtrack a little bit, the, all the, the nylon guitar thing, like for Farewell to Kings and the Trees, sort of made me, that's what made me take guitar lessons at Ellie Kastner, because I thought, okay, classical guitar, you can play that. And then that led me... not uncool. Yeah, exactly. And, and, uh, um, and then I would uh, hear about Yes all the time, and I think I think probably uh, Lifeson mentioned Yes in an interview, or Steve Howe or something. So I checked them out, and then of course I was blown away by that too. Like that just took it into a whole different realm for me, right? I mean, Yes has, has got to be the uh, archetypal prog band in a sense, right? Just the atmosphere that they created with the art, with Roger Dean's artwork, and uh, you know, and then like just. Like I'd never heard anything like Steve Howe before. I mean, or the whole the whole thing. The whole thing blew me away. But um, speaking of the artwork, sorry. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, the artwork on Second Sound looks a lot like uh, Roger Dean artwork. Really? A little bit. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've had some people say that it looks a little bit like drama. Actually, it might have been come of the guys in the band that said that. Okay. See, I didn't notice that. Where did that come from? Um. I was just kind of looking at the first album cover. Which kind of fell into our lap too. Like I, I did a search. So I'll back. I'll, I'll explain a little bit about what's inadvertently happening here. Apparently, um, the first record is is a wood cutting apparently, or no one's really quite sure what it is. It's in a, and its earliest known publication is in a book called La Flammarion. Uh, how you see it with the coloring, not because we changed it, we reversed it and, and uh, did different coloring to it, you know, again, digging deep. But you, you will see it illustrated with a specific, like a little bit of a more purplier kind of looking thing. That was never in the original. Anyway, so you're, uh, you know, before the first album even came out, I did a, I did a YouTube video with Seems So Real from the first record, and I, just, I did a search for uh, Pleroma, which is the universe according to the Gnostic Gospels kind of thing, right? Like the wholeness, the fullness. I'm not going to get on, on this nonsense. But that's what came up, and I looked at it, and was like, wow, that's a very cool picture. And then a, couple, a bunch of people actually responded and said, is this going to be the album cover? Is this going to be the album cover? And I thought, no, I had no idea that it would be. And then I thought, wow, it's great. That, okay, I'm going to try to make this story remotely short. So, hold on. Got to cook that wood burner again here. Okay, so we used, we used that for the album cover. We flipped it, you know, a couple of little small things we did with it. Uh, obviously a huge success for us. It was just a great stroke of luck to have that as, a, as, a, as an album cover. Um, so when I was looking at designs, obviously the DVD is just sort of a, an artifact of... <laughs> see, do you see the master plan here? <laughs> it ain't a brilliant master plan. But, uh, well, well, maybe some people don't see it as clearly as your, your big fans. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's because it's not very good. It's not very well thought out, or else people would see it. No. But uh, anyway, artifact is sort of like a, a found, you know, artifact version of that album cover. And uh, for, this, for the new record, I mean, not, I was hoping for something to fall into our lap, so to speak, like the first record, but it just wasn't. And so it was actually, you know, getting down to the deadline. It was like, okay, the artwork has to be taken care of, right? And so I just sort of, I took the tree from the first record. There's a, there's a guy, and there's a couple of elements in that, in that cover. The, the tree, the tree stands out to me. So I actually, in my own very unsophisticated manner, my unsophisticated Photoshop manner, you know, hacked it out and then sort of transplanted it on. And I'd been watching... Uh, the making of 2001 A Space Odyssey. And I saw that thing with the, uh, I can't remember what it's, it's like the boat of Isis or whatever it is, where the sun comes over the horizon and it's got that thing, you know? It's got that thing, you know? Getting my Scarborough roots out. 
so that kind of inspired me, and then I just did a thing with the planets, you know, that, that put me in a different headspace, and then I just literally took a couple of pictures of planets and just jammed that tree on it <laughs> and gave it to the guy that, uh, that did the DVD artwork, my friend Tom Forsythe, and said, here's my really bad, terrible, terrible idea, like, you know, like primary printer grade, you know, grade two. Like I, I, if, if anyone ever saw the rough art versions that I give people, they would just go, <laughs> man. But uh, I gave it to him and he, we kind of bounced some ideas back and forth and then it kind of took on an interesting sort of thing. And then, but it's weird to me because now that I look at it and I sort of did see the, 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 the yes-ish, Roger Dean-ish, like from Fragile era kind of thing maybe, but it definitely wasn't in the forefront of my mind. And uh, looking at it now, it just occurred to me the other day with looking at it now, you could look at the, if you took the first, because I have the first CD and then the second CD on my monitors, and I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, okay, you could almost think of it as, you know, in reverse order. This one has, this one is the darkness with that tree. And then, uh, you know, then we've got the full pleroma. Or you could just say, shut up and have another beer, Ed. This is all <laughs> nonsense. But so now that's that's consequently that's, that's kind of making me think that there should be a tie-in. Although I don't want to use that initial uh, flammarion image to death, but I do kind of like the uh, cosmology behind it and all the nonsense. Yeah. Right? Well, Prague is your roots in Prague. Yeah. Space, it's Rush. It's yeah, exactly. Like there's that. Well, and I like the way that the like, band's like yes did use, they had that common thread that, you know, I mean, Roger Dean was an amazing, is an amazing artist, and right away, as soon as you see it, you know, you think, yes, even when you used to see other Roger Dean covers that he did for other bands, right? I couldn't help but think, yes. Well, sometimes when I hear you, I mean, I'm thinking yes, but then other elements come out and, and pop out, and not just, you know, not just little things, but your, your influences are clearly 70s rock, not just prog rock. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah, we kind of, uh, we get the, you know, it's, it's, it's very excellent, I don't know, that's, a, you know, how, how to put it, that was pretty lame, but uh, it's, it's a huge honor to be compared to Yes for us, uh, but I have to say that there's definitely nothing that overt, we're not trying to sound like Yes, or we're not trying to sound like any band in particular, although, it, you know, if I had to, again, if I had to contain it and put it in a little box, it's it's an adaptation of the sum of listening to the Dixie Drags, Yes, Rush, Kansas, Led Zeppelin, uh, you know, Genesis. Who else? Have Gentle Giant. Well, and you do pay homage to uh, Siberian Country. So. Yeah, exactly. That's something that uh, we really want to step away. If I can speak for the other guys for a second, we want we really want to kind of step away from that because initially we started out playing a lot of the classic prog covers. And there's, so between that and the fact that Phil has a really high, strong voice, which I incidentally don't actually think sounds much like John Anderson in particular, other than the fact of the range, uh, you know, there's quite a different voice. I would never hear Phil and think, oh, John Anderson, right? Uh, he definitely doesn't try to sound like John Anderson like some people do. Um, having said that, between his voice and doing the cover tunes that we used to do, and we did a lot of yes, we kind of got labeled a little bit as a yes tribute band, which is kind of a, you know, you no, know, yeah, it's something that I definitely don't want to be, and uh, so. It's compliments, though. Yeah, I understand why people, I mean, I said it earlier when I said that uh, Long Walk Down reminds me of Wind and Weathering Era Genesis, right? So, uh... Again, it's it's flattering, and, and you know, obviously, yes, was a huge influence on us all. But hopefully, we have a sound that's it's more progressive. Yeah, yeah that's or, you know, it's only our second record, but I think we've got our own sound. Right. Great. Well, let's take a little break here and uh, drink a beer. Musicians in bars getting beer. Ed Bernard, drug farm. 